this video, we will talk about the FFJ or fermented fruit juice. It is a nutritional activation enzyme that aids in the improvement of soil and as a result, also the crops that grow there. Here are the materials to produce FFJ. You will need a canister, any ripe fruits, brown sugar, a strainer, weighing scale, and of course the labels. First is to prepare your fruits. In my case, I use ripe bananas. Yeah, <laughs> And I will weigh 500 grams of the fruits. After weighing 500 grams of the fruits, I will cut it into small pieces. Yeah, I'm feeling chef tired. So this is 500 grams and it will be a 1 is to 1. So kapag 500 grams yung iyong ripe fruits, dapat ay 500 grams din ang iyong brown sugar. So here is the brown sugar. You need to add the 500 grams of brown sugar. And of course, mix them well. Make sure that the lid also has holes for gas exchange during fermentation process. Of course, cover it and label. Do not forget to put the date kung kailan nyo ginawa at ang expected date of harvest. After 7 days, open it and make sure that there are no macro-organisms such as worms, mga ganon, diba? So ayaw natin yung mga ganon. And it's a miracle, walang uod yung sa akin. So here you can wear plastic gloves for the extraction. Pero dahil poor lang kami, gumamit ako ng ziplock. <laughs> so yan, strain nyo. Then, yan, extract it. At this point, parang feeling ko mali yung ginagawa ko. Pero tama pala. <laughs> yan, so... Strain lang ng strain hanggang makuha talaga yung extract. And then, another container. Transfer it to another container. And again, make sure na meron pa rin butas yung ating takip. Kasi yung fermentation process is still happening. Cover it. And you can already store that. So to use this, you will dilute 2 tablespoons in 1 liter of water. Transfer it to a spray bottle. And apply it to your plants. So FFJ is very useful for your fruits and your flowering plants. Thank you for watching. For this video, we will talk about Oriental Herb Nutrient. OHN. It increases plant robustness, sterilizes, restrains growth of anaerobic bacteria, keeps plants warm, revitalizes crops, and activates growth. To make this, we need the following materials. You will need herbs, brown sugar, weighing scales, funnel, canisters, blender, strainer, and of course the labels. To start, 
you can wear mask and or gloves because there are some herbs that are very irritating to your skin. First step is to chop your herbs. So you will chop here pepper, ginger, garlic, and the onion. So for this portion, I am weighing 500 grams of the herbs. So for this formula, I used 500 grams of herbs and 500 grams of brown sugar and 1 liter vinegar. So the idea here is dapat yung vinegar natin ay matakpan lang niya yung portion ng ating herbs. So here you can use just 500 grams of herbs and of half a liter of vinegar. So the next step is to blend it. And transfer it to the canisters. This one is optional, but you can add brown sugar. And mix them well. Yeah. Submerge the mixture in the vinegar. As what I've said a while back, the idea here is to really submerge the solid portions with vinegar. Then mix it well. Cover and make sure there is flavor. Make sure that your lid has holes in it because it will aid the fermentation process or gas exchange. So the next step is to ferment for 7 days. After 7 days, separate the juice and the solid components. and transfer to another container, preferably a smaller bottle, but also make sure that the lid has holes in it. This is because the fermentation process is still ongoing. To use this, dilute 2 tablespoons to 1 liter of water. Transfer it to a spray and apply it to your plants. That's it. Thank you for watching. Okay, so those are some uh, supplementary materials na pwede yung gawing basis sa knowledge on fertilization and even pest control. Okay, so let's move to uh, number 49, okay? So aside from diseases, yellowing, browning in plant leaves, aside from diseases, yellowing and browning in plant leaves are caused by a favorable soil water relations, b water overwatering or underwatering, c presence of nematodes or letter d weeds. 
So the answer for this one is letter B, which is overwatering and under and or un underwatering. So uh yellowing and browning ay karaniwang problema hindi lang sa mga uh, crops natin even in house plants diba so hindi lang siya sa mga like yung, yung mga nasa field but even sa house plants kasi ang tendency natin is to overwater or underwater them so ano mangyayari kapag in overwater natin ang isang uh, plant sabihin natin siguro Uh, Calathea, if you're familiar with Calathea. Ayan. So, kapag nag-overwater tayo, ang tendency nun is magkaroon ng water lag condition. Magkaroon ng water lag condition. Kapag sinabing water lag condition is hindi na drain masyado yung tubig sa isang pasok. Ayan. So, kapag nangyari yun, Uh, mas gusto yun ng ating mga fungi. Mas gusto yung water lag condition, mas favorable yun sa growth ng fungi and other microorganisms. Ayan. So, ang nangyayari is nagkakaroon ng root rot. So, ang result ay root rot. Nagkakaroon ng root rotting. So, kapag nagkaroon ng root rotting, dun sa roots ng ating mga house plants kumbaga ay house plants kunwari ay nagkakaroon ng slimy layer kunwari ito yung roots nila nagkakaroon diyan ng slimy layer na nagba-block ng nutrients tsaka oxygen na pumunta sa taas ng plant So, ang nagiging resulta nun, dahil hindi nakapunta doon yung mga oxygen at water, eh hindi ba ang isa sa mga reactants o ang isa sa mga reactants o isa sa mga ingredients ng photosynthesis ay water. So, kapag walang water, ang mangyayari, hindi mag hindi mag apo proceed sa photosynthesis. So hindi magiging kulay green yung dahon. Kaya nagkakaroon ng yellowing. Tapos kapag dahil sobrang ano na, sobrang uh, tagal na sigurong ganun yung conditions, yung yellow nagiging brown. Tapos para na siyang malalanta, siya nagda-dry. Ayan. So ganun na ang nangyari kapag over watering. Same thing have, a same principle is happening in underwatering. Kaso nga lang sa kanya naman, walang root rot. Kapag nag-underwater ka, walang available na water. Walang available na H2O. Thus, nagkakaroon tayo ng drought. So kapag walang makuhang water yung roots natin, same yung mangyayari na walang mag-initiate mag ng, ng photosynthesis. Walang, wala, kulang ng ingredients, kumbaga. So walang mag magaganap na photosynthesis. Okay. Next. Okay, so number 50. So for number 50, which of the following is a bacterial causative agent of plant diseases? A. Nephotetic virescence. B. Santomonas SPP. C. Rhizoctonia solani or letter D. Pyricularia oryzae. So, the answer for this one is letter B, which is Santomonas SPP. Ang nephotetic virescence is a virus vector. Ang, 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 ang organism na to ay tinatawag na green leaf hopper. And then, uh, it is, it transmit rice tungro. Ito ang vector. Vector. of rice tungro virus. So dito pa lang hindi na siya hindi na siya bacterial disease. Ayun yung hinahanap, 'di ba? Rhizoctonia solani is a fungi as well as Pyricularia rizae. So these are both fungi organisms. 
fungal organism. So, ang bacteria dito ay Santomonas spp. Santomonas spp is uh, one of the most common na na reasons for wilt or bacterial wilt. Bacterial wilt ang tawag. Yeah. Yeah. So, take note of that. Again, Ang nephotetic virescens is a vector of rice tungro virus and it, it is a green leaf hopper. Ang rhizoctonia solani Ang rhizoctonia solani ay uh, isang fungi and ang pericularia orizae is another fungi. Okay? Number 51, it is considered as the mature or ripened fruit of ovary. Okay, the answer for this one is letter B, which is fruit. Actually, dapat blank to. Okay, so the answer for this one is, is fruit. Kapag ripened ovary, ayan, so it's called the fruit, mature or ripened fruit, ovary. Okay, number 52, a process of covering the land surface with a plant residue, plastic, or other materials to hold loss of moisture through evaporation. So A, contour, B, mulching, C, strip, cropping, or letter D, gabion. The answer for this one, covering, sabi doon, the answer is B, which is mulching. So in mulching, uh, we are using different agents such as we can use uh, green green materials like uh, grasses or kaya mga leguminous crops. We can also uh, yung mga straw, yung hay. Ayan, yung mga yan. So we can also use that as mulch. And if you are in in a commercial farm, you can observe may mga black na mga plastic na naka na naka takip sa land. So that is also called a mulch. Ayan. Number 53, we have this method of propagation involves the use of vegetative parts of plant. So A, uh, sexual. B, vegetative. C, cutting or letter D, asexual. So again, when we are already talking about the vegetative parts of the plants, that is already in involved in asexual propagation. So this will be discussed more in a separate session. Pero yung asexual propagation, examples of this are uh, cuttings. So cutting is, it includes stem cutting. Yan mga yan. Uh, meron ding leaf cutting. Meron ding root cutting. Yan. We also have, of course, grafting. Uh, budding. Meron ding. Separation. Division. Yeah, so those are some of the uh, early or marketing. So those are examples of a sexual means to propagate your plants. So all of these are using vegetative parts. Okay. So seeds that are produced by seed growers, breeders, or individuals without approval from the National Seed Industry Council. A, certified seeds, B, farmer seeds, C, good seeds, or letter D, breeder seeds. So, the answer dito is letter C, which is good seeds. Okay, so yung breeder seeds are already, are, uh, kumbaga, it is bred by different individuals. I am uh, So, certified seeds, of course, are approved and are already certified by the National Seed Industry Council. Yeah. So, ang farmer seeds siguro is kapag yung farmer nagtanim, tapos ay, uh, sarili niya yun. So, wala siyang uh, affiliation or wala siyang kinalaman sa mga mas matataas na authority. 
ठीक Fifty five method of uh, temporarily storing the harvested crops in stocks or piles. Temporarily storing a threshing b bagging c holding or letter d piling. So you can observe this mostly kapag uh, you are harvesting rice, also corn, siguro. The answer is letter D, which is piling. The keyword there is storing. Storing of harvested crops in stocks or piles. Okay. Number 56, the process of providing crops, the condition that will make them free of weeds, Pest and diseases. A. Land preparation. B. Tillage. C. Plowing. Or letter D. Crop protection. Okay, again, free of weeds, pests, and diseases. The correct answer is letter D, which is crop protection. Again, kanina dinispas natin what are the different branches of crop protection. We have weed science, plant pathology, and of course, entomology. Okay, so before we Continue again. Uh, I think na and dami ulit na information. So we can also, uh, we can again have a, a short break, which is a five minute break. So here is another possible source of knowledge sa inyo in the, in the line of uh, agriculture, specifically hydroponics. So you can also watch this one. Hello everyone. Welcome to Urban Food Forest. As we face the modern world, we are gifted with lots of technologies and innovation. And, if you are someone who is looking for a revolutionary way to grow your greens and herbs, you are in the right video. Today, we will discuss the nutrient film technique hydroponic system. So let us start by knowing the science behind it. In this system, a relatively shallow nutritional solution is sent via a tube. It uses a water pump to deliver the solution and when the plant's bare roots come into touch with the water, they absorb the nutrients in the solution. Isn't that amazing? Let us start. For the materials, prepare the following. You'll need a reservoir to contain the nutrient solution, a nutrient pump. You'll need tubes to distribute water from the nutrient pump to the NFT growing tubes, a channel for the plants to grow in, net pots to contain the plants and growing media to start seedlings in, and of course a return system, tubing, channel, to guide the used nutrient solution back to the reservoir. Perhaps, you are worrying. Where can I get all those materials? Luckily, I have a system like this that you can purchase. It's the original mini farm. You can click the link on the description box below. Now, let's go to the steps to set your NFT hydroponics up. To set up your NFT system, you need to connect all the tubes. In this model, I am using, you do not need any tool. Just make sure that all of the tubes are well linked and you're good to go. Your setup must look like this after connecting all the tubes. Next, connect the elbow tube in the allotted slot at the topmost tube and link the hose as well. This will serve as the channel for the nutrient solution later. After this, connect the other end of the hose to the aeration pump and connect it to the timer. Set this setup aside as we prepare your seedlings. Get your seedlings and transplant them into the medium of your choice, but in this video, I will use sponge cubes. In doing this, make sure to immerse only the roots, and keep the stem and leaves above. After that, 
place each seedling in a net pot. Look at those cute seedlings. Now that you have already prepared your seedlings, let us go to the water reservoir. Pour water into your chosen reservoir. After that, get your nutrient solution, and mix it with the water. Make sure that you follow the proper amount as indicated in the label of the nutrient to avoid over or under nourishing your crops. After doing this, position your reservoir into the tube heading downwards in your NFT system. Place the aeration pump that you have set aside a while back inside the reservoir. The timer should remain outside the reservoir. Now, to provide the proper light requirement for your plants, install a grow light. You can do it the way I did it in this video, or you can devise your own way. You can position it based on your available space. You can now turn on your system. Check if the water is flowing in your grow tubes, then back to the reservoir. If everything is working well, place your net cups in each hole of the growing tubes. So there you have it, you are now ready to grow your own food using the nutrient film technique hydroponic system. What do you think of this guide? Do you want us to make more videos about hydroponic systems? Please let us know in the comments section below. By the way, we have videos on setting up a deep water culture system. You can also check those videos through the link in the description box. Thank you for joining us in today's video. Be sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon to turn on notifications for new videos. Happy growing! Okay, so let us uh, move with our discussion on uh, item number 30, uh, 57. So this is an important part of an integrated rural, rural development that provides durable, comfortable, and healthy homes with clean water, sanitation, facilities, and community infrastructure. So you can see that it uh, somehow describes a rural development, which is a general uh, term, okay, a general aspect of farming. So A, is it irrigation and drainage, B, farm machinery, C, farm structure, or letter D, agriculture. So the answer for this one is letter D, which is farm structure. Again, it is it encompassed you know, durable, comfortable, healthy homes with clean water, sanitation facilities, and community infrastructure. From the term infrastructure itself, it is somehow a clue what is the answer for this question. So yeah, farm structure. Next, let's have number 58. It does seeds of many fruits and plantation crops cannot withstand drying and should not be permitted to dry out before planting. So these seeds are called A, wet seeds, B, dry seeds, C, orthodox, orthodox, or letter D, recalcitrant seeds. So again, if it is a big seed, generally, or seeds of fruits and or plantation crops, the answer is letter D, which is recalcitrant seeds. So kapag hindi na withstand ng drying, Ang tawag sa kanila is recalcitrant seeds. So ang example nito is rambutan, durian, yung mga yan. So ayun yung mga seeds na recalcitrant. In, uh, in contrast, we have orthodox, orthodox seeds. Ang example naman ng orthodox seeds ay ang mga beans. Mang bean, uh, sitaw, yung mga yan. Yung mga yun, kaya nila ng, uh, ng mababang moisture content. Kaya nilang madry, kumbaga. So, orthodox din ang rice. Ayan, mga yan. Corn. Ayan. So, those are orthodox seed. Okay, number 59. Which of the following plants have tendrils? Okay, tendrils. Which of the following plants have tendrils? Mali. Mali yung question. Which of the following plants does not have tendrils? Okay, does not have. A, bitter gourd. Tama, does not have 
Tendrils. A. Bitter gourd. B. Mung bean. C. Grapes or letter D. Passion fruit. The correct answer is letter B, which is mung bean. So, ang tendrils, ito yung parang umiikot sa vine. ba? Diba? Meron tayong example. Ito yung pole. Ayan, ayan yung pole. May mga plants, which are, which are ito mga to, na kapag umiikot, diba? may, parang may spiral na ganito. So, ayun yung tendrils. So, you can observe that in all of these three plants. Tendrils. Basta yung parang tumaganan. Ayan, kita niya. Okay. Number 60. Can we uh, again close sa end ng session? So, number 60. Which of the following is not a beverage crop. So, A, coffee, B, pepper, C, cacao, or letter D. So, for this question, you just need to ask yourself, alin dyan ang hindi ko iinomin. If you are not familiar with the term beverage crop, so these are crops na uh, pinuproduce from plants na non-alcoholic. So, ang coffee is non-alcoholic, same through with cacao and tea. Ang cacao ay ginagamit siya uh, to produce chocolate. Pepper, of course, is not a beverage crop. Hindi ka inom ng, pe ng pepper. <laughs> okay, so six, number 61. Uh, which of the following is the female horse? Okay, so this is a terminology that I introduced during our session on animal science. A, U, B, mare, C, foal, or letter D, guilt. So the correct answer is letter B, which is mare. You I female ng goat. Joke lang, hindi pala. Ang you I female ng sheep. Ang male ay ram. Ang foal ay anak ng kabayo. Guilt is a uh, young na calf na babae female okay and mare ang female horse so number 62 billy is to do ayan whereas blank is to duck so uh, ang basically ang tinatanong lang dito is ano ang male na tawag sa Duck. A. Drake. B. Duck. C. Ram. Or letter D. Anas. Correct answer is letter A, which is Drake. Okay. Number 63. So, which part of the business model canvas speaks the uniqueness of an enterprise? So, this is on the agri-marketing aspect. So, A, unique value proposition. B, unique proposal. C, uniqueness index. Or letter D, unique enterprise value. So, the answer for this one is letter A, which is unique value proposition. Unique value proposition. So, this is actually a part of the business model canvas. And unique value proposition. Perhaps I can present your own uh, para you have an idea lang on the kung ano ang itsura ng isang business model canvas. Wait lang.
OK. I will just uh, stop share screen for a while. Okay. So, this is an example of a business model canvas. So, actually, this is the one that I, pres uh, that I presented during the... Wait lang. Okay. This is the... business model can canvas that I presented for the agriculture agriculture Kabataang Agribis program of the Department of Agriculture. So if you can see, marami siyang components. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have 9 components there. Wait, I think I to annotate. Yeah, and we have one, yeah, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine components. So these are the different components of uh, a business model canvas. So una meron dyan yung, yung, yung sinabi natin kanina na unique value proposition. So the question that we are answering for unique, val unique value proposition is that what makes your enterprise unique against other enterprise or other businesses na nasa market na. Ayun. So that is the major thing that we are answering there. So in my social, in my enterprise, which is called the Sprout of I6111, uh, I uh, included there that we are a social enterprise that aims to empower and attract the youth towards agriculture through marketing low-priced gardening kits, herbs, and vegetables. So this upholds urban agriculture while ensuring food security for household amidst the pandemic. So the product kits were designed to uphold the IKEA effect. So when customers purchase, they will also start a journey with us. So educational content will be created to aid our customers. And we are also anchored on empowerment, accountability, compassion, trustworthiness, and integrity. So, ang, ang something dito na, na unique in this enterprise is that uh, when you purchase, it is also a start of a journey. So, hindi siya matatapos na lang after mong mag-purchase. Instead, you will start a journey with us. Parang, of course, you will be there kapag uh, you are growing your plant. So we are opening our channels for that. So you can send us a message, ganyan. Parang, ayun yung ano niya. And also, meron tayong educational content creation na nangyayari or generation kung saan nandoon na yung the goal is magkaroon na ng uh, parang videos or educational content regarding yung mga common problems ng isang gardener. Ayan. So, that's the goal. So, kasama rin dito sa isang business model canvas ang key partners. So, ano yung, saan magmumula yung funding, ano yung mga suppliers, ano yung, ayan, local shops, ganyan. Local shops ng mga suppliers yung mga yan. So, those are the partners. Uh, meron din, of course, yung key activities. Yung key activities, ilalagay mo naman doon as a as an entrepreneur, as someone who looks at the overall process, kailangan ilalagay mo rin doon yung activities na gagawin mo sa iyong enterprise. So, in my case, I have their educational content creation, infographic production, shopping for raw materials, packaging of sprout up kits, delivery by courier or meetups, feedback requesting, posting on social media, advertising. So, those are key activities that I have for my uh, enterprise. Of course, meron din tayong key resources. When we say key resources naman, ito yung mga materials. Ito yung mga raw materials para mabuo yung isang product mo. 
in my case, nakalagay dyan vegetable and herb seeds, ziplock, craft box, seedling bags, ganyan, and so on and so forth. Meron din dyan human resources. When we say human resources, these are uh, people. These are possibly employees that you, you are looking forward na i-hire sa yung uh, specific na enterprise or sa yung company. Yan. And of course, uh, nandyan din yung customer relationship. How do you plan to sustain your relationship with your customer? Tapos dyan, I included building up uh, Sprout Up Facebook community, tutorial, trivia, agriculture, and uh, gardening video contents, feedback through online shop review and Google Forms, and of course, offering discounts and campaigns. So, The target here is to build this aspect talaga, itong customer relationship. So next is yung sa channels naman. Kapag sinabing channels, paano mapupunta sa, cons sa, cost sa customer or sa consumer yung product mo? So here, uh, I indicated here direct selling, so delivery and meetups. Uh, sa ayun, tama, Delivery and meetups, meron ding online platforms such as Shopee, Lazada, Facebook page, and of course, yung mga Uh, platforms for delivery. So, delivery channels. We have uh, JNT and among others. So, sa advertisement naman, merong FB ads or organic advertising advertisement through educational videos on TikTok and YouTube. So, ayan, isa yun sa mga uh, ilan yun sa mga channels that we are using para makonect yung aming product sa customer. So, customer segments, yun yung mga customer na target natin. So, ang sabi ko dito, the focus is on the youth, but we will also entertain gardeners, ayan, mga plantitos and plantitas of all ages who are needing of assistance and knowledge on agricultural concepts. Ayan. And of course, those who want to venture on the those who want to venture on the practice of emerging technologies such as microgreens, urban gardening, and hydroponics. So, ang mga target customers dito ay yung mga interested citizens. Ayan. So, when I created this uh, business model canvas, uh, I also accounted the rise of the plantito and plantita trend. Ayan. So, ayan siya nandyan. But then, of course, as uh, time changes, nag mas maluwag na ang ano, we have lesser uh, engagement siguro dun sa trend na yun. Ayan. So, But let us see where that will bring us. Okay. Oh, and of course, we also have our fiscal or yung ating financial na details in this uh, business model. We have first yung cost structure. Ayan, asan magagaling yung startup capital? Ano yung ma ilan yung magagastos mo sa isang sa isang unit ng no? isang sprout up kit which is my product. Ayan. So dito nakalagay na ang total na ang aking total cost for one unit is 58.80. Tapos ang strategy ko, pag sinabing revenue naman, ito yung uh, paano kikita, or uh, ayun, paano kikita yung 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 ano tawag dito, enterprise. So dito nilagay ko yung cost plus pricing strategy. So from 58 pesos na gastos, ang uh, kita is ang isang product kit, kit will cost 100 pesos. So ayun ang cost plus pricing market uh, pricing strategy. Plus of course yung kung paano nga may bibigay sa payments will be done by Gcash bank transfer or cash on delivery. Yeah. And of course we have the manufacturing business model. So sa manufacturing business model ayun lang yung i may raw materials as i-manufacture mo, then ibibigay mo na siya. So, this is just a glimpse of what's in a business model canvas. Ayan. So, I think that this can also help you in the marketing and agri-marketing -market, agri -marketing, uh, portion ng let up. So, that's it. Okay. Ano oras na? Oh, naka... Okay. Next. Let me again share my screen.
So again, yung uniqueness ng isang enterprise ay nakapaloob sa unique value proposition. Okay, number 64. Let's have a piglet is also called a calf, B winling, C kid, or letter D foaling. Piglet daw. So if we're talking about piglet, isa siyang pig, swine. Alin dito ang term na related sa swine? The answer is letter B, which is winling. Ang calf is a young cattle. Young cattle. Kid is a young goat. Whereas ang folding is the act of giving birth. So hindi yan hindi yan hayo. Act of giving birth in horse. A horse. Fold ang batang horse. Okay, so I hope that that is clear. Let's move to number 65. Okay, for number 65, before we take another uh, five-minute break, another short break. Number 65, a general term for male and female animal parents, respectively. Okay, so A, bull, cow. So male and female daw. So B, dam and sire. C, sire, dam. Or letter D, paternal and paternal. Okay, male and female, the answer is letter C, which is sire and dam. Okay, sire and dam. So, ang sire ay yun ang general term for male uh, animals. And yung dam naman, ito yung for female uh, animals. Ang bull and cow is, of course, uh, cattle. Dam and sire is paliktad kasi sabi respectively, di ba? So, ay, 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 ang dam ay hindi naman male. Ang sire ay hindi naman female. So, baliktad siya. Paternal and maternal is a very general term. Okay, so before we uh, proceed to number 66 and uh, uh, almost finish itong ating session for tonight, let us have a uh, five-minute break para mag-digest ng information.
Okay, so let us continue. Okay, I will just share my screen. Okay. So in cows, uh, the act of giving birth is called A, gestation, B, parturition, C, cowing, or letter D, calving. So the answer for this one is calving. Again, calf. Ayun yung tawag sa batang baka. Oh, batang baka, yan. So, the act of giving birth is calving. Parturition is generally, ayan yung act of giving birth. Kapag sinabi generally, ayan ang tawag sa lahat ng farm animals. So, kapag mga anak na siya, parturition ang tawag sa process na yun. Gestation is the period from the conception to the uh, birth of the specific animal. Birth ng anak. Okay. 37. The best time to harvest most of the crops. So, sa, kailan ang best time? A. Mid-morning. When the heat of the sun is modest. B. The early evening when time is coolest. Uh, C. High uh, noon when sunlight is brightest. Or letter D. The coolest time of the day which is usually early morning. So, there are some crops like Dorian yata na hinaharvest kapag early evening. But uh, the coolest time of the day, or usually for most crops, I letter D, which is the coolest time of the day, early morning. So, sa early morning kasi, pinakamababa ang respiration. Pinakamababa ang respiration. E kapag mababa ang respiration, ibig sabihin, parang isipin natin na yung mga, yung mga uh, cells ng ating mga halaman or ng ating mga prutas o kaya yung mga ayan, prutas o kaya gulay natin, yung mga cells nila is parang tulog pa. So, nilalamig pa sila. So, hindi pa sila aktibo. So, kapag ganun, we need to take advantage of that. Ayun yung ibig sabihin ng mas mababang respiration. Parang tinatamad pa sila. And, and ano. So, kapag, kapag medyo hindi pa sila active, ibig sabihin, they are not spending energy. Unlike kapag you will harvest kapag high noon na sobrang init, sobrang taas ng respiration, I ibig sabihin, madali silang ma magka-curl o kaya kukulubot. Ganyan. Kunwari kapag tomato, mag-harvest ka, so so sobrang trick ng araw, you will notice na after some time, stress na yung tomato mo kasi actively respiring na nga siya, meron na heat stress, Tapos, daragdagan mo pa ng, tinanggal mo pa siya dun sa kanyang uh, plant. So, it, so ang tendency nun is mag siya ng maraming energy para ma-maintain yung ano, yung, anong tawag dito? Maintain yung structure niya. Ayun. Tapos, ang magiging resulta is mas lalo siya may stress. So, magkukulubot siya or, or ayun, isa lang yun sa mga symptoms. Mag- magkukulabot siya. Ayan. So, that is why dapat early morning tayo. Or sa coolest time of the day. Okay? Number 68. So, which is an example of orthodoxy? So, A, rambutan, B, rice, C, cacao, or letter D, lansormis. So, kapag ganito, pwede nyo tignan kung ano lang yung naiiba. ba? Kasi, perhaps, it, most of the time, or Oo naman talaga. Isa lang yung answer dyan. Yung rice. De, ay, so, pwede nyo tingnan kung alin dito yung, yung kakaiba. Tapos possibly, ayun yung sagot. Kasi ang orthodox naman, at saka recalcitrant, ay dalawang types lang. So, kaya kailangan alam nyo rin yun. Orthodox, at saka recalcitrant. Ayan lang yung types nyan. So, dalawa lang sila. So, kung orthodox dito ang hinahanap, most, most probably, yung iba ay recalcitrant. So, the answer for this one is rice. Ngayon ang orthodoxy. Okay. Number 69. Uh, which is an example of a recalcitrant seed? So, again, you can use the 
uh, and a little the technique that I have just given you. Ano dyan yung para na iba ang seed? Okay. The answer I letter B, which is durian. Kasi ma malaki ang seed ng durian, ang corn, string beans, siya kamang bean. String beans ay sitaw. Yan. Ay maliliit lang yung mga seeds nila. Okay. Number 70. It is the identification of individuals or lines that have better qualities in the population. So, identification. So, A, evaluation. B, selection. C, multiplication. Or letter D, variability generation. So, this is in the aspect or in the field of breeding. So, this is not only applicable for crop but even for animals. So, identification is called selection. Ayan. So, when we select, as what I've mentioned din kanina, for example, we have a... Uh, the qualities in a population. We have a population, let's say, in a classroom. Siguro, in a classroom. Siguro may mga seats dyan. Ayan. Hindi. Sige, sabihin na lang natin na ito yung mga buto na lang. Seeds. Seeds yan, kunwari. Ayan. So, for example, in this population, 15 sila, di ba? Tapos, nilagyan mo sila ng water. So, tinitignan mo kung sino pinakamabilis na mag-germinate. Sino kaya ang unang mag-germinate sa, sa 15 na butong yan? So, after, uh, after, sabi natin, two days. Sabi natin, two days. After two days, na nakanotice ka ng mga changes sa kanila. So, ito yung mga changes. Sabi natin, kulay red. Ito ay ganyan na siya. Okay. So, meron ng ganyan. So, ganyan. So, so may mga tumubo ng radical. Okay. So, considering this, these different changes, Siyempre, pipili ka dyan ng mga possible na uh, individuals na merong better quality. So dito, sino ang mas mabilis mag-germinate? Siyempre, mamimili ka dyan. You can say na ito. So pwede natin siya. So mama. You can say na itong dalawa. Sige, isama na natin. Itong dalawa. Ayan. At ito, pwede rin ito. Okay. But of course, when you are selecting, kailangan dun tayo sa best. So kapag titignan mo, sino dyan ang best? Itong dalawa. So that could be selected as the individuals na merong better qualities. So, this will be selected as the individuals na merong better qualities. So, itong mga to, itong dalawang to, pwedeng ito yung maging parents ng next generation. Ang mga susunod na uh, offspring. So, ito, itatanim ulit to, tapos papatubuin ng sobrang tagal hanggang mag-flower siya, hanggang makabuo siya ng bunga. Tapos, yung bunga na yun, Ah, uh, ayun yung meron ding karakteristik na parang ganito. Most probably. Okay? So that the process that we just did is called selection. Ang evaluation is kapag in-evaluate in mo na yung yung uh, specific organism na okay ito. Ah, uh, ilang centimeters ang kanyang uh, radical at ganitong point. That's evaluation. So multiplication is now nasa dulo na tong mga to yung know, sa multiplication and even yung variability generation. So, nasa dula na yun ng, ng breeding process. Okay? Next. 
Number 71. When this nutrient is absent, plants are small. There is general yellowing. Then enhance the essence of older leaves. Okay, so A, nitrogen, B, oxygen, uh, C, sulfur, or letter D, boron. Perhaps I will also have another uh, session or another discussion on this. Pero super overview lang kasi I think naman na hindi masyadong lalabas yung mineral and nutrient deficiencies for ano, for Ayan. So, A, nitrogen, B, oxygen, C, sulfur, or letter D, boron. So, the correct answer is letter A, which is nitrogen. So, in nitrogen, ang karaniwan dyan parang uh, sign or, or uh, yes, mga sign na kulang ang nitrogen mo ay general yellow. Ayan. Okay. So for number 72, this plant is a valuable source of nitrogen in the soil. A. Sesbanya, B. Citrus, C. Guava, or letter D. Palm tree. So again, you can look at kung alin dyan ang kapag nitrogen, leguminous crop yan. Legumes yan. So ang legumes dito ay Sesbanya. Yes. So sesbanya is a legume commonly used as a green manure crop to add nitrogen and organic matter in the soil. Okay. So number 73, the main crop produced in Gemaras. The main crop produced in Gemaras, A, corn, B, legume, C, root crops, or letter D, mango. So the answer for this one is letter D, which is mango. And first, let's uh, go with number 74. Growth stage of plants, which starts with the deterioration of the plant. So kapag silabing deterioration, nagi age na siya. So that term, is called senescence. So, ayan, senescence is uh, related to aging. Ayan yung term na yun. So, the answer is senescence. So, here are the different uh, stages in plant life cycle. So, mayroon tayong tinatawag na seed. Ayan, so, seed pa siya. So, plant in its dormant stage, seed embryo will develop when optimum conditions for germination are provided using the food stored in the seed. So kanina, sa, yung optimum conditions na yan, yung sinabing optimum conditions, so these are the presence of water, for example. Diba? So kapag may presence ng water, mag-germinate ang isang seed. So low respiration rate sa seed na stage, uh, a way for the plant to wait for favorable conditions for the next stage of growth thus increasing the chances of survival. So the next stage is juvenile or vegetative stage. So dito, lumalaki na yung mga uh, parts ng plants. So this starts as soon as the radical or the young shoots emerges from the seed. So germination and seedling stage is included in this section. So the length of juvenile stage can be months 
for 40 years. So, ang pag 40 years, ayan na yung mga puno na talaga. So, in these stages, vegetative growth only. Kapag vegetative, ito yung leaves, stems, yung mga yan. Bran uh, oh, branches. So, rapid growth and of course, no flowers at this stage. Next, maturity or adult growth. So, dito, kasama na rin dito yung reproductive stage. So, flowers, fruits, and seeds are produced by sexual reproduction. So, once this happens, plants move to the next stage. Okay, so, andito na rin yung reproductive stage, no? So, yung senescence naman, which is yung next stage, is metabolic processes slows down. So, kapag sobrang tanda na ng isang plant, ganyan, tapos uh, mas mababa na yung, yung mga metabolic processes, ayun na yung start ng senescence. Kaya siya... Kaya kanina, sabi ko ay aging. Kapag nag age na yung plant. So, reproduction and growth ceases. Ayan. So, sometimes only part of the plant shows in essence like trees losing leaves. Sometimes the whole plant declines. So, ang ilan sa mga sign of aging ay yellowing, ayan, browning of leaves, wilting. So, those are signs of aging. Of aging of uh, senescence then. So, and lastly, yung death. So, reproduction and photosynthesis stop. So, naka, wala na itong dalawang processes, processes na to. Cell death and nagdidecay na at saka nagdidecompose na. So, that is that is the uh, different uh, plant life cycle. So, again, seed Juvenile or vegetative stage, C maturity, uh, maturity and adult growth, and senescence and death. Okay. And last item before we end this session, uh, it is the small white portion at the center of mung bean seed. The small white portion at the center of mung bean seed, A cotyledon, B radical, C hilum or letter D microphyll. So, I have here a, an illustration. The correct answer is hyloom. So, ang hyloom, ayan yan, yung white na yan. White or yellow or cream, yan, that's hyloom. So, ang microfile, ito yung nasa, for, sa last session yata, na banggit to. Ayan, ayan yung microfile. Seed coat, of course, is yung nakabalot sa kanya. And here, we have a detailed na mature embryo, which means, siguro ito ay diniligan na. Ayan, kaya meron ng mga tumutubong mga parts dyan. So, yung radical, ayan, nakalabas na yung radical. Again, nandun yung seed coat. Yung, yung cotyledon, andyan na rin sa loob. Tapos, epicotyl, hypocotyl. Ayan. Okay, so I think this is it for this uh, session. Uh, I will still look for different supplementary materials that I could provide. Ayan, so... Uh, this is session 10. Uh, sessions uh, five, uh, session 7 and 9 will be uploaded tomorrow along with this or over the weekend. I am not really sure actually. So, uh, ayun, but hopefully earlier. Ayun, so, thank you very much for this session. And I hope that uh, you are learning more. In the next sessions, 11 onwards, uh, I will discuss more on the uh, general topics on all of the concepts in agriculture and fisheries. Okay? So, good luck sa mga magtitake ng mock test. Ayan. So, thank you very much for listening and I will already end this uh, recording. Thank you.